The power of a computer does not arise from complexity. In fact, the basic operations of a computer are very simple. The power comes because it does these operations without making mistakes and very quickly. But those individual steps are almost stupidly simple. Stuff like store this number over here, retrieve this number over here, add one to this number. These are things that a person could do very easily. But at the dawn of the digital age, when computers were way too big and expensive for ordinary folk, people came up with ways to do this by hand on paper. This is the first episode of a little series I'm doing about paper computers. I only just recently heard about them at all, and I'm pretty into it. So each episode is going to be about a different specific paper computer. And I know of about four or five of them at this point, but I think there's more out there. So please let me know if, uh, if you know any that I haven't heard of yet. Today's paper computer is the know-how computer from 1983. Probably the most widely used paper computer ever. The know-how computer was invented by Germans Wolfgang Bach and Ulrich Rode. In the 1980s, these guys worked together on a West German TV show for computer enthusiasts called the WDR Computer Club. Antwort darauf gab ab den 80er Jahren der WDR Computer Club. Wolfgang Rudolf und Wolfgang Back begleiteten über 20 Jahre die Einführung und Entwicklung der Heimcomputer. Wolfgang Back was one of the main hosts of the show. He was a journalist and a TV presenter who was all about digital technology. Not really a trained engineer or anything, but he was a knowledgeable showman and a computer enthusiast. The real technical brains behind the know-how computer was this guy, Ulrich Rode, who also appeared on the show from time to time. Rode had a degree in mathematics, and he was the editor-in-chief of MC Magazine. That's MC for microcomputer. They publish pretty technical articles about computers, not really an academic journal, but was intended for pretty hardcore computer hobbyists. The know-how computer debuted on Bach's TV show and at the same time in Rhoda's magazine, Computer for Anfanger. That's a computer for beginners. You get the magazine article that explains what it is and how to use it, and then you can also watch them doing it on TV. They presented it as part of a segment on the show called Know How, which is why they called it the know-how computer. The magazine article says they'll send you one for free, you just pay the shipping. The basic idea behind the know-how computer, and really all paper computers, is to give you a chance to design computer algorithms and see how a computer would perform them, but you do it all yourself on the paper. There's no actual machine hardware that you run it on. And there's two big benefits here. You know, first off, nobody really had a computer in their homes in the early 1980s. Most kids didn't even have one they could use at school. But the paper computer can give you some kind of real hands-on experience with programming, even if you've never even seen an actual computer. The other benefit to using this thing is that you are the computer. Probably the most important thing when you're learning how to program is learning how to think like the computer thinks. You've got ideas in your head of what you want the computer to do, but you need to translate that into a program you know, specific steps that the machine can understand. That's what programming is, and a great way to learn is to be the computer yourself. The official version of the know-how computer looks like this. On the right side are eight data registers. That's the computer memory. And the data registers hold numbers, which you're supposed to represent using matchsticks. And on the left side is where you write your code. Each step of the code is going to be one of five operations. Here's the allowable operations. This is called the instruction set for the computer. Plus, this one adds one to the given register. So plus three means you add one to the value in data register three. It just adds one at a time. You can't add any bigger number. Minus, this is the same, but it subtracts one. J, this jumps the execution to a different line in the code. Zero. This is the most complicated one. It checks if the given register is zero. And if not, then nothing happens. It just goes to the next line. But if it is zero, then we skip one line in the code and go to the next one. This is weird, but it's important. And stop. This one just ends the program. 
And that's it. Just using these five operations, you can write programs that do lots of stuff. Now, you can print out a copy of the original German version. I'll put a link down there. But you might as well just draw your own. The code lines go on the left, and the data registers go on the right. I got my matches here. So, like, the number 4 in data register 2 would look like this. All right, let's start off easy here. I'm going to try to make a program that clears out the first data register to zero. First, we got to try to think like the know-how computer. Let's say I start with five things in here, and I want to clear them all out. Now, you can't just throw them all away at once, because there isn't an instruction for that. We have to stick with the five allowable instructions. You don't have to think too hard here. I'm going to somehow use the minus step repeatedly. And the way to repeat it is to use the jump instruction. So here's a simple first attempt. I go minus from data register 1. And on line 2, I say jump back to line 1 and do it again. All right, let's test it out. I'm going to use this golden ducky to keep track of which step I'm on. We start on the first line, subtract 1. OK, next line, jump back. Then subtract and jump, subtract, jump, subtract, jump. Now we've accomplished the task of clearing it out, but we got a bit of a problem because the thing is just going to keep going and try to subtract when there's nothing in there, and that's not allowed. Really, we got to do all that stuff, but before every subtraction, we need to check if the data is down to zero yet. So to do this, we're going to use the zero check instruction. You work this out, eventually it's going to look like this. See, this way we begin everything by checking for zero. If it's not zero, go down to the subtraction step, which then jumps back to the beginning. And if it is zero, we should stop. Looks good to me. Let's test it out. Yeah, it's pretty satisfying. All right, how about we make one that adds two numbers together? Let's make it so we start with numbers in registers 1 and 2, and then the machine adds them together and stops with the answer in register 1. You want to think about this one? I'll give you a minute. All right, here's my idea. Just like the subtracting machine, only I'm going to subtract the number out of register 2 and at the same time add it into register 1. Each step is going to move one match from 2 back into 1. If you want to have some fun, see if you can make a variation that subtracts one number from the other. Or if you're really ambitious, could we do multiplication? Actually, you can do multiplication, although it took me a while to write the code for it. I use 21 lines. I don't know if you can do it any better than that. I'm going to start with the two numbers in registers 2 and 3, and the answer is going to appear in register 1. This is going to be 5 times 3, so I'm hoping the answer will be 15 when I'm done. This takes a while. It took me about five minutes to run through this, but it's pretty satisfying to see it work. I mean, all it does is add one and subtract one, but apparently it can also multiply. It makes me wonder, what exactly are the capabilities of this thing? Like, in theory, what other types of functions could it compute? Well, this is the beauty of the paper computer. It turns out that even this super limited set of instructions actually is sufficient to compute any function that a full electronic computer can compute. And uh, how could this be? Well, it's because actually your real-life computer isn't any more powerful than this. If you look closely enough at the very bare bones of it, your computer can also be boiled down to only a few operations, like adding and subtracting one and jumping around in the program over and over again. The computer is capable of extreme complexity, but its basic building blocks are not complex at all. If you want to play around some more, here's a few more for you to try. I'm going to put all my answers in the YouTube description, but of course there's lots of different ways you could write the code, so yours may not look like mine. I got an easy, a medium, and a hard for you. All right, here's the easy one. Start with some number in register 1, and end up with two times that number in register 2. Or how about even fancier, do the same thing, but put the final answer back into register 1. All right, here's the medium one. Let's start with some number in register 1 and test if it's even or not. So I want you to make it so the machine stops with a 0 in register 2 if the original number was even, and it stops with a 1 in register 2 if the original number was odd. This is actually the same as computing 
the original number mod 2. All right, here's a hard one. You start with some number n in register 2 and end up with the sum of all numbers up to n in register 1. So if we start with 4, then the answer would be like 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, which is 10. That's yeah, kind of hard. The know-how computer is probably the most well-known paper computer out there, and it still has a lot of fans today. Wolfgang Bach seemed pretty proud of it. He mentioned it often in his writings, and he liked to mention how they distributed 400,000 of them to fans. And his old computer club show is still producing content, which they post on YouTube. Wolfgang Bach died in 2019, but he posted a demonstration video about the know-how computer in 2014. They gave him a comically small one to use on the set for some reason. They had to cut all the matches in half. Apparently there are some teachers who use this to teach basic computing concepts to kids. I heard it's big in Namibia. There's a few places online where you can read about it. It's mostly in German. I'm going to link to a site that has a very nice web-based know-how computer simulator. You can type in your code there and it's going to run it for you. But for me, I'm going to use the know-how computer the way God intended it. On paper. It's biodegradable, recyclable. And if you get mad at it, you can rip it up into tiny pieces. They say the know-how computer was the most popular paper computer ever, but it was actually pretty late to the party. Next time we're going to look at one from the 1960s. Stay tuned.